And as you begin a seed like this, uh, where you know time and speed is of the essence, what are you looking for um, and what are your considerations? You are probably looking for money very early um, because sometimes you can start with a, a pittance of gold, which uh, may prevent you from buying those important spells that you'll need to take out the pirates and whatnot. Uh, depending on how much money you start with and what spells are located, you may want to consider that early Garland run. And we've got uh, good old Quad X is joining us here in level one. And so we're going to have a fun race already. Um, seeing Temper also in level one might be of some limited use. But really, uh, since this is a sprint from beginning to end, I don't know if that's going to be uh, terribly utilized by anybody. And we are already seeing Tristel run for the Bridge of Destiny, uh, watching the text scroll by. And it looks like Fuchsia and Salty are going to go uh, take a peek at, uh, at uh, Garland first. Yeah, the Quad X is going to be helpful, but you'll, you'll notice they didn't have enough money to buy Quad X on all three of their Black Mages. So I would personally take this run to Garland right here. Uh, I would consider checking the chest. Looks like Salty Fries went right for Garland. That Quad X will take care of him as long as his party doesn't fall asleep. <laughs> Garland countering with the sleep spell and three of the four are down. Um, and we've got the, uh, the Black Mage named Quad X, hopefully going to cast Quad X here. Um, Fuchsia Fantasy and the uh, lower right is checking chest, so let's see if she uh, she can find anything. And there's our TNT. Lo and behold, there's the first progression item, and so I, I feel a little bit uh, disappointed that we might not be able to watch the uh, Marsh Cave this evening. Yeah, it's a little bit of a shame, but uh, we can only hope that there's something important there that they'll have to come back to it at some point. Uh, Tristel, meanwhile, is sprinting across the uh, the continent, uh, hitting the uh, overworld party mix. Um, he's going to uh, uh, go ahead and uh, move on over to Provoca. We'll go ahead and check those flags first. Oh, Thief already taken a dirt nap. Which is actually not good because Thief has the highest luck in the game, allowing them to run. Thankfully, the Black Mage's luck is not too shabby. That should help them run, provided they all stay on their feet. So now with Fuchsia Fantasy uh, getting that uh, extra money for taking Garland down, he's got uh, the ability to go ahead and take that uh, Quad X spell for all of his uh, Black Mages. Um, can also do some shopping here. Let's go ahead and look at uh, Tents and Cabins. Uh, cabins at 17 are a bargain. Yeah, that's a solid price for Cabins. If, if Tents are cheaper, which it's possible Tents are more expensive, Cabin might be the bargain for the game. One thing to point out on this flag set, um, as somebody has pointed out in chat about skipping the loot, this is a really interesting goal. Uh, the goal is to beat Phantom, therefore there are actually two items that are not required. One of them is the loot itself, because the plate that you need to break is beyond the Phantom. So since the goal is killing Phantom, we don't need the loot. Secondly, the other item that we actually don't need is the crown, which of course leads to the Mystic Key quest. The one door that you need to open also lies beyond that plate beyond the phantom so our only major items that we are looking for beyond when they get out of the lake is the floater and the slab that is essentially go mode for these runners so Tristel gave us a peek at the level two black magic spells the good news is that the warp spell has been found and that's going to really help our runners save some time later in the race the problem is is that there were there were no aoe spells available i believe i saw the ice spell and that was it and so Tristel is not even going to try to attempt the pirates yet. Uh, he's gone out into the uh, overworld to go ahead and try to build a couple of levels. Uh, meanwhile, Fuchsia Fantasy in the lower right. Let's check these chests here at Matoya. We've got a house, 337 gold, and a heel helmet. That heel helmet will definitely sell for something, which uh, will allow him to buy spells later. Tristle's going to be in a very interesting position. He was only able to afford Quad X on two of his Black Mages, and while he's you know working on getting more charges, uh, it is going to render one of his Black Mages uh, in a difficult position of just sitting there and taking hits and swinging with his fists. So we'll see how he overcomes them. I don't believe we saw anybody go into the armor shop, or I'm sorry, or for that matter, the weapon shop, uh, to see whether or not there were any um, swords that a thief could equip, which would be helpful, or even those good old wooden staffs that you can give to the uh, black maid so that they can start thumping pirates if they need to. Uh, Fuchsia Fantasy is going to uh, do a little bit of shopping here, um, and maybe we'll see uh, them attempt a pirate shortly. Uh, the heel helmet is um, going for about 1200 Well, that's not very good. 
Uh, in this particular flag set, the enemy percents are between 45% and 220%. On these pirates with an original vanilla base hit points of 6, uh, if they stayed at vanilla, certainly a black mage with a with a wooden stick of some kind would assist. Uh, but it's going to be tough if he doesn't find anything for that caster. You know, I did notice that the sleep spell is available here uh, in level two. And, uh, you know, those pirates can be susceptible to that. That might be a strategy to uh, try to get through these. They obviously, uh, enemies that are asleep can't hit you. Yeah, the major uh, factor on sleep, though, is in the way this game works, when you cast sleep on an enemy, if they have not yet attempted to wake up, if they have not yet had a turn yet, they will automatically wake up. So it only burns that particular turn, which sometimes that can be enough, certainly, but you will have to cast that every turn and hope you go first to try and lock them down. Saw Tristel there gain another level, so I believe his party is at level 3. Fuchsia Fantasy's thinking the same thing, wants to go ahead and gain some levels. Salty Fry, are we finally going to see somebody take the pirates on? Let's see here. Yep, looks like it, so let's see what the pirates spun up with for this seed. An interesting play, in lieu of meleeing, he has decided to use his heal helmet to sort of restore party hit points. These pirates are hitting pretty hard. Yeah, and they're not missing either, so their accuracy is uh, is up uh, uh, into the higher levels for these uh, for these flags. Here comes the heel helmet. Uh, Salty not selling the heel helmet is going to use it to try to get through this encounter. That's a great idea. Fuchsia Fantasy has run all the way back to Canaria to go ahead and take a peek for uh, for some weapons, finds the silver knife. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab a couple of those. Uh, Salty Fry still working on those pirates. He's got almost half of them down. Depending on what happens in uh, Dwarf Cave and kind of where their next uh, locations are, uh, I unfortunately, I feel like the, the, the spending of those knives is a bit of a waste. One for your thief, certainly it's better than nothing, but your three black mages are going to be casting quad X on these pirates. I would leave that be because you've wasted uh, what might be potentially a level three or level four spell for the sake of your, I'll say barely used melee for your black mages. Pirates uh, still swinging at Salty Fry and Tristel. Uh, both Tristel and Salty kept the heel helmet for this encounter. Fuchsia sold the heel helmet. We'll have to see whether or not the uh, that's a, a regrettable decision here. Um, still, um, still some charges for Quad X for Tristel and Salty has the pirates down. Yeah, sol solid play by Salty for keeping that heel helmet. That's definitely a strategy you, you wouldn't normally have considered. Salty Fry loading up on heal potions. Um, with this uh, party composition, a thief and three black mages, you are going to need a, a steady supply of heal potions and the heal helmet. Let's see if he uh, decides to sell it or keep it. It looks like he might keep it around here for a little bit. Uh, but gold reserves already down to just 88 gold. Uh, let's see if he decides to let it go after all. Yep. Uh, cash is king, and 1,200 gold uh, it speaks volumes when you're trying to go to Elfland next. It is, and it's clear that the heel helmet served its purpose, and now it's going to serve even more purposes. Uh, the tents were 61 gold, which means your cabin's going to be your bargain overworld travel item in this game, um, which is not bad, because cabins are going to restore for more hit points and, and uh, generally be a better value. All right, Sforzando, so with the TNT located in Temple of Fiends, um, what is your progression here? Obviously, we're going to go visit the uh, visit the dwarves um, and get that TNT cashed in. Do you like to do Elfland before you cash in the TNT, or do you like to wrap around uh, the outside of the continent and do it afterwards? I prefer to do it afterwards, um, mostly because it's. I feel like it's extra sailing. Uh, when you go straight across and you go up to the dwarves and then you go through, you're going to hit Melmond, which is going to tell you a lot of what's at Melmond anyway. And then if you sail under to Elfland and check everything at Elfland, you can continue going east and then north to Crescent Lake. It's sort of a, a backdoor, a different way to Melmond than players don't usually go. Um, I like to think of it as not necessarily backtracking your steps. You know, I tend to agree, um, and you can also dive into the Earth Cave and get a little bit of, of uh, extra money. Um, pick up those chests, um, which you can then use uh, back down in Elfland, cashing on any weapons and armor you don't need. Maybe you found some gold, and you're also checking chests at the same time. 
Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. Uh, in this particular race, I don't think the floater is going to be in the Earth Cave because I'm not playing in this seed, and so <laughs> I think our runners can skip Earth Cave. That is my prediction. Yes, yeah, so and our uh, our leader uh, in yesterday's race, Artea, loves to go to Earth Cave. Uh, can't understand why other people do it, but I, I got to tell you, the only time that uh, anything important ever seems to be in Earth Cave is when Artea is racing and I decide not to go there. Very interesting premise. If you're playing the game as normal and you're looking for the floater and the slab, more importantly, you're looking for the floater because it certainly opens up the rest of the world to you. Uh, it, barring the crown, there are 91 possible chests that the floater could be in. Earth Cave, in what you could check, is 16 of them, which represents about uh, less than around 20% chance of the floater being in the Earth Cave. So it actually does stand a high likelihood. It's just that, in my opinion, the distance between chests often makes it a little more difficult to check than if you head, say, straight to Volcano. You know, with the uh, inclusion of early warp, though, um, and warp is sitting at level two, uh, you could dive pretty low into Earth Cave and then use those level two warp charges to get the heck on out. Uh, and so, uh, meanwhile, I did not want to lose track of what Tristel was doing up in the upper right. He was uh, went and did a little bit, bit of a uh, Peninsula of Power grind, and he found that giants uh, have less than 300 hit points. Um, and that makes them super, super attractive uh, to that quad X spell. Uh, and Tristel already has, a, a, he may not be in the lead as far as progression, but he does have the lead with his uh, party at level five or level six already. Yeah, one of the downsides to doing Earth at this point though, is you currently lack, if I remember right, you currently lack a means to kill the wizards if you see them down in B3. You also are unable to check four specific chests Three uh, in which are guarded on B2 by an Earth, and one on B3, which is guarded by an Earth. They can't be quad axed, and so uh, overcoming them is a little bit of a conundrum unless you go down to Elfland first. Um, it looks like Salty is going to skip Elfland. I can't tell you how much of a bad idea this is from personal experience. Yeah, I have to completely agree. This is a, this is quite a risk that Salty is taking. Um, in the armor shop in Melmont, he did find the silver bracelets, um, and at, they were super cheap at about 460 gold apiece. Uh, and so he has a, a full set of four of those, and they are on his party members. And so with those 15 absorbed, that is going to help him get through some of these tougher dungeons. But uh, boy, skipping those level three and level four magic shots in Elfland, um, we're gonna have to see whether or not this is a this is a brilliant risk or an awful one. Uh, question in chat: Where was the TNT? The TNT was in the northwest corner of Temple of Fiends. So we have not seen Marsh Cave on any of our featured runners. I will tell you, there's a runner off stream currently hitting the Marsh Cave. <laughs> Somebody's always got to be different. Marsh Cave represents 10 possible chests that you could check without the crowns, so it runs uh, just a hair over 10% that the floater could be down there. So not a whole lot in the level 6 uh, magic shops there that were of interest. We did see copper bracelets. They were more expensive than the silver bracelets you can buy in Melmon, so hope nobody goes and picks those up. Uh, speaking of a pickup, Salty Fry has the uh, canoe and is warping back out. And so, you know, he's he's taking go, go, go to heart and uh, is going to go ahead and maybe do a little bit of leveling here. But as far as progression goes, at least for our runners that are on screen, uh, he is way out front at this point. Yeah, the only downside is he skipped the level three and four. He's going to have to go back before he hits the volcano. Or wherever he decides to go, I should say. It doesn't have to go to volcano. Volcano just represents the largest percentage chance of key items being there at this point in the game. Fuchsia Fantasy trading in the Sun Sword for a bit of cash. Um, and looks like you found uh, Fire 3 uh, at about 1,000 apiece. Um, that's a reasonably good pickup. Are we going to take a look and see what's in level four first? Nope, we're going shopping. He's going to go ahead and take those um, take those spells. And what might not be a bad idea for Fuchsia is it might not be a bad idea for him to go and take a look in Marsh Cave. Fire 3 is going to help him clear it, uh, provided he's got at least some decent levels. We still got to check house prices. If house prices are not good, I probably skip it. But if house prices are less than, say, 800 gold, it might be worth taking a look at Marsh Cave. 
So Fuchsia did find the AoE spell that everybody's looking for. It's going to be Fire 3, and it's going to be in Level 3. And so Salty Fry, sitting here in Crescent Lake, does not have access to that yet, and needs to go back at some point to pick that up. There was nothing much of interest uh, in Level 4, and I didn't take a peek into Level 5. I didn't see what was there. Um, but uh, the first AoE spell that we're seeing that's of any real use is going to be Fire 3 in Level 3. Uh, Trenton, our wonderful tracker, has pointed out that the Peds have more than 300 hit points, which is going to make it very difficult for grinding without an AoE spell to warm them up first. All right, so Fuchsia is going to give us a peek here, I think, at the Melmond uh, Black Magic Shop so that we can see uh, what else is hiding there. Um, but at this point, uh, at this point in the race, there, you know, no, uh, no easy Nuku strats for anybody. Which is a good thing I skipped out on this game. Nuke being 7 or 8 is actually going to make this game a, a, a bit more difficult um, with some of our fiends having a decent amount of magic resist. At least uh, I know I've had trouble with carry in the past. Uh, you know, coming at her even with Ice 3 is difficult. If our flagship spell is Fire 3, um, that's just going to make it even worse for anybody attempting to kill carry. At this point, they may have to consider leveling Thief, finding a solid weapon, maybe the tail... Uh, in, in order to try to build up some sort of melee strat or, or something because our spells have been kind of dry. Yeah, Fuchsia Fantasy now uh, diving into the Earth Cave. I love this call uh, with the mix of spells that are available. So with Fire 3, uh, Fire 3 can be used uh, quite nicely here uh, in the Earth Cave and you have warp to get you the heck out of here. Um, it, you might as well stick around and gain some levels as well. I don't know if Fuchsia knows that the... Uh, the Giants have less than 300, but the Hall of Giants is sitting right here, and so those Quad X spells can be used as well. And the Fire Threes are going to be especially helpful on the Earth Fiends. Question in chat, how long does the playthrough on this randomizer take? In this particular flag set, we've had two games so far. Both games had the winner at 122 and 111, I believe, respectively. Uh, in game one, which I thought was a fairly easy game, all the runners came in within 25 minutes of each other. This game's going to be a bit different, though. With no nuke strats and actually kind of poor spell allotment early, uh, we may see more melee, we may see more uh, high leveling strats and so it could take a bit longer I laughed out loud the uh, the meme continues the opal bracelet was found in the uh, first floor of the uh, earth cave anybody that watched uh, all of stage three when we were uh, looking for the opal bracelet to dot done I, I instinctively twitched <laughs> I didn't see any dot duns in SRL so I think everybody knows what flag set we're on hopefully Oh, wow, Sforzando. So the crown has been found um, at the uh, first floor of uh, Earth Cave, which opens up a conundrum uh, for Fuchsia Fantasy. What do you do? Oh, that's tough. That's tough because um, the crown has opened up another 27 chests that you could check for the floater. 24 of them are pretty easy. Three of them are moderately difficult, but are in a place he hasn't been yet. So it actually opens up... Uh, basically 37 more possible chests he can check given that he has not been to marsh cave yet yeah and and you uh, had mentioned earlier that somebody went to marsh but now anybody that finds that crown really needs to sit and think about all of those chests that are sitting in the marsh cave um and wondering if there's anything hiding there yeah, and it's tough because crown is not a required item unless the crown chests contain a required item, which is just, it makes that a very tough conundrum. You absolutely do not need the mystic key to beat Phantom. So, it, it, you know, it, it makes a tough, tough decision. Twenty, Basically, 24 chests or what, 27 chests are what you get for getting the crown, uh, which represents, uh, let me try and do some mental gymnastics in my head uh, just less than a third percent chance to have the floater so it's it's decent odds but with the ship it's going to take you a while uh to check all those chests which of course burns clock yep cashing that crown in when you own when you only have access to the ship takes a while to do you've got to sail back and forth taking encounters the entire time uh fuchsia also noped out of the earth cave immediately upon finding the crown um, any thoughts to sticking around Earth Cave and looking in the second or even possibly third floors uh, before you go ahead and cash the crown in? I probably would have in that position just because you're already there. Save yourself the trip back, especially if it happens to be that something is there. I, I think I definitely would have finished the job while I was there, but uh, noping out on the crown is probably not an unheard of play. 
Fuchsia picking up that extra fire three charge for that last black mage that didn't have it. Uh, so Fuchsia is loaded for bear, or loaded for the marsh cave at the very least. Um, and you've got to think, uh, we're going to see our, our friendly, uh, kindly old king up in the northwest castle. Oh boy. I can't tell you because I don't want to spoil it, but I'm watching the off-stream runners and something interesting happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're, you're teasing us. Um, so we'll have to see what happens here. Salty Fry leaving uh, Crescent Lake, uh, finding it not to his liking. Um, so, in the direction in which he is traveling makes me wonder if we may see uh, an early play on ordeals here. The weird thing about ordeals is this is what we call non-incentivized flags. So normally in the vanilla Final Fantasy game, the last chest in the ice cave and the last chest in castle ordeals contains a special item. It's the floater and the tail, respectively. Those items have been shuffled into what we call an incentivized pool of, of items. And so when you turn those two flags off, there's no actual incentive for lack of a better term, to go check those last chests other than the sheer volume of chests that you're checking. Castle Ordeal only represents nine chests or roughly a 10% chance to contain the floater. I see chat reacting in stunned surprise to find out that the kindly old king in the Northwest Castle is actually the evil dark elf Astos, um, but Fuchsia Fantasy uh, took Astos down with little to no trouble. Somewhere, Aaron Paul is sitting on his knees going, He can't keep getting away with this! <laughs> uh, Tristel uh, is uh, going to be the one that gives us a, uh, a glance into ordeals here. So in goes Tristel. Uh, there are, a, a, you know, nine chests here that you can check. And, and like you said, the odds here are not uh, terribly high uh, that there's a, a progression item hiding uh, in one of these uh, in one of these unincentivized chests. Um, but, you know, Tristel probably feels like he can, uh, assuming he can get through the pillars in time, uh, get through this pretty quickly. Also, he's got to probably feel a little behind. He didn't get out of the starting gate like everyone else did, or at least many of our other runners did. So maybe in the back of his mind, he feels behind and is taking a gamble, hoping that something pans out on this. Uh, one of the other things is that with the warp spell, he probably feels pretty confident that he could clear this dungeon in only a couple of minutes. Salty Fry, feeling the same way, is also going to go into Ordeals. And so two of our featured, featured runners have decided to visit uh, Castle Ordeals. If, if our friend uh, and fellow uh, runner Files is out there somewhere, Files is smiling broadly right about now. See, I wouldn't mind the Castle Ordeals play if the seed was incentivized, but because it's not, it, it just it represents a smaller, a smaller chance to find an item that you need. 10% for the floater and quite a bit less for the slab. And I do agree uh, with uh, Brilliant's uh, comment in chat there saying that, uh, you know, when Fire 3 is your main damage dealer, uh, Ordeals is not a bad call. Uh, I do agree with that. Um, the uh, the amount of uh, spells that we have and their, uh, their availability uh, makes uh, Ordeals, it makes Ice Cave to a certain extent. Um, and it makes Earth Cave all, you know, quite uh, good calls here. Uh, Volcano, though, um, is probably, uh, from your resource perspective, is probably not the place you want to be right now. Yeah, Volcano is going to be pretty tough for our runners because we haven't seen Ice 3. I don't know that we've seen Ice 2 even. I think Ice 2 was sitting at level 6, which means that uh, Black Mages are going to need uh, a 16th level before they're going to be able to get a charge of that. Uh, Fuchsia now is going to start uh, opening up chests for us, so let's uh, let's see if the Crown Bonanza is a boom or a bust. Four down, 20, potentially 23 to go, but Marsh Cave uh, obviously represents a larger bulk chest count. He may go to Northwest Castle than Marsh. Yep, it looks like exactly what he's going to do. So he's going to go ahead and run and take the uh, take the long encounter uh, sprint here. Uh, go ahead and uh, go up to Northwest Castle. Three chests up there and, you know, also a grind opportunity if you want to take it. Crystal finding the mass immune in Castle Ordeal. So actually that is going to be hugely helpful with a limited spell chart. 
Yeah, suddenly uh, that uh, useful thief, which is our uh, stage seven flag name, uh, has come a little early. Uh, the, uh, the thief is going to have something to do here. Uh, Fuchsia running into the images. Yeah, so the next thing you're going to be looking for is you're going to be looking for maybe picking up that temper at one because you know your spell selection is poor. You may have to rely on melee. Temper at one suddenly became useful again. And then you're really going to be looking for the power glove. And I don't know if we have seen fast yet. I oh, there's our, did. there's our power glove right there in the bottom left corner of Castle Ordeals. Oh, wow, this is a this is an ordeals that is going to actually uh, be quite useful to to people that decide to go there with the Masamune and also uh, uh, the power bonk um, found there. Um, Fuchsia Fantasy did something quite interesting. Um, he opened those three chests in the Northwest Castle, which included the Zeus Gauntlet, uh, which does cast Lit Two. Um, which is uh, something of interest, but uh, elected to not keep it. He went ahead and uh, reset back uh, to Elfland. Um, and so we'll have to see whether or not that was a good decision or something that uh, he wishes he kept later. Yeah, it's going to be tough because he doesn't know what's in Castle Ordeal. He doesn't know his thief's going to be useful for melee unless he goes to Castle Ordeal. So at that point, I mean, I would have kept the Zeus Gauntlet. That would have given his thief something to do in in fights where he maybe shouldn't run. Uh, obviously, levels are going to be kind of a premium here because you're going to need to get up there hoping that maybe Nuke is level 7 and gets a 21. You know you're going to need some levels. Crystal makes his way then out of Castle Ordeals. Uh, I did not get a peek at Salty Fry. I'm assuming Salty uh, escaped uh, with everything there in Ordeals. Well, I should hope so. I didn't get to look either, but uh, there was a lot of good treasures there. I would hope he didn't nope out of there. Fuchsia still opening chests. Hasn't found much of interest yet. Um, going up to the right side of Temple of Ordeals, there'll be some gargoyles guarding three chests over on this side. And if he hasn't killed Garland yet, now's a good time to do it. You'll get that free warp back to Castle Canaria. Sometimes it's good to leave Garland. It just depends. Quadex casting Quadex on a giant uh, kills them off. Um, I believe Salty is angling in the direction of the volcano here. Um, I don't know. Oh, nope. It looks like he's going to turn around. Uh, I, uh, I don't know if I would make that call. Uh, Murder pointing out in chat that Salty Wipe that four Fire Threes were not strong enough for the zombie dragons. Oh, man. And so you leave the Masamune behind and also the Power Bonk. Uh, that's got to not feel good. Um, but uh, the, the, Z the Zombie Ds came to play today. Yeah. That's gonna see the thing that that's really rough because you gotta know your melee is very or your magic is very limited. That's almost a premium item to get out of there uh, because if you don't find the tail, you're not equipping the katana or the sun sword or whatever the best weapon you have in your inventory is. Mass mean gives you the best weapon right now. Salty has made the call and is going to go ahead and chance this uh, volcano. He's got Quad X, he's got Fire 3, he's got Warp, so he can get himself out of bad situations if uh, this is not going to be uh, of use to him. But I got to think, uh, if, if I were in Salty's shoes right now, I might check the armory, um, and that's really about it. I don't know if I'd uh, try to uh, complete the volcano here. Well, the tough call about not completing the volcano is, unfortunately, if you come out with nothing, it's a double dive that gets you nothing. And so, because uh, at this point, uh, very few of our runners, especially Salty, do not have the means to beat Carrie, unless she happens to have less than 300 hit points, or can be brought down to that point very easily. It's where that Masamune would come into such, uh, you know, great effect here. Um, you know, even even fiends melt uh, to the uh, strongest sword in the game, uh, but Salty doesn't have it, and and it's going to make this uh, this dive into the volcano that much more difficult. Tristel, however, does, um, and so Tristel, with both the Masamune and the Power Bonk, um, can actually, you know, conceivably make a play here at, at trying to complete this dungeon all in one go. And see, that actually makes, I mean, that makes a lot more sense. He's in a better position to do it than Salty is. Um, one thing I want to point out, and this is really, really interesting, uh, is that the Paralisks fight that Salty Fry is in is actually 
with the exception of that glance, a fairly easy encounter for a decent amount of experience. They usually have only like 30 to 45 hit points and can be easily taken down with um, anything but fire, basically. And so I'm also super interested in what Fuchsia Fantasy is doing now, uh, abandoning the crown hunt um, without going to Marsh Cave uh, with its uh, 13 chests available. Uh, has decided to go ahead and, and, and forego going down into Marsh to check those chests and is uh, heading on over to uh, Crescent Lake instead. Trenton, our wonderful tracker, pointing out that the White Shirt and the Light Axe are both in the Dwarf Cave. Those would be very interesting. I'm going to assume Fuchsia has them because the Dwarf Cave represents an easy eight chest to check. And so if you're just joining us, uh, welcome to uh, another round of the uh, Final Fantasy Randomizer League. We are in the fourth stage of eight stages. Um, this is a uh, fully forced party of three black mages and one thief. We call it the uh, chaotic alignment of the, uh, of the six uh, party members available to you. Uh, the goal for this one is to defeat the Phantom. Um, and the reason that we're defeating the Phantom as opposed to Chaos is because uh, Temple of Fiends Revisited can sometimes be a real bear for these uh, for these little white uh, little black mages, I should say, um, in their low HP. And, uh, and for broadcast purposes and for our own sanity, um, running, uh, running with uh, three black mages, uh, if you don't want to be here for four plus hours, uh, this is probably the better way to do it. Um, the TNT was found almost immediately uh, in the Temple of Fiends um, up on the upper left hand side. And the only other progression item we have found so far is the crown and the crown is hiding uh, in Earth Cave. Uh, and so at least on screen, we are still looking for the floater at this point. Yeah, if you think of the race more of as a clearing out the first four fiends, and then Phantom is sort of the finish line, like the sprint to the finish, if you will, um, it makes a little more sense to run uh, to you know to, to sort of justify that goal. As it, even if one you lose one party member per fight, if you will, there's no way to bring them back, and so Phantom just represents that dead sprint to the finish once you beat the four fiends, and we'll see later that uh, sometimes Kraken and Tiamat in their original forms are a little tougher than you give credit for. So now so, we've... Go ahead. So uh, it, like, I think you were just going to say the same thing. We are uh, heading down into the uh, the lower bowels of the volcano here with both Tristel and Salty. Um, they're in very different positions. And wow, it looks like Fuchsia is going to go ahead and join uh, our, our two featured runners. Everybody's going to the volcano. Um, it's a uh, question now of whether or not anything is found here. Um, boy, I hope, uh, hope Salty has a soft potion on him. Ooh. That's one of those items that uh, can be taken for granted because uh, they're, they're sometimes they're expensive in the shops. And so sometimes runners won't pick them up. They'll always be in Canaria when items are shuffled, in which they are. But the vanilla price for them, I think, was 800 gold or something like that. So when they're, or no, not 800, but uh, they're a little more expensive normally. And so when you find them, sometimes they can be priced way out of the range of any reasonable person to, to buy even a 10 stack. Tristel uh, discovers a ribbon uh, here down in the uh, lower depths of the volcano. Ribbon super useful. Um, and uh, the only question I ever have in this this set of flags for Tsando is, who on earth do you put the one ribbon on? At this point, his thief is ironically his strongest character, and so it makes sense to put it on him for a couple of reasons. One. Yes, he's your strongest melee. You don't want him to die to magic. But two, he also represents your best runner. And so uh, the ability to escape from fights is paramount in a lot of cases. You definitely don't want him to get stoned or to eat an instant death spell or otherwise. I see a comment in chat from uh, Vicarian saying that the uh, sprites that Fuchsia Fantasy are, are using are amazing. And yes, we agree. Um, those are custom sprites that were uh, created by uh, Terralyn, uh, one of our community members, uh, commentator, uh, tracker, racer. Um, if you're interested, uh, you should uh, join our Discord. And we, can get, we can get you hooked up uh, with those sprites if you want to use them in, uh, in your Final Fantasy uh, ROM as well. Or Tristel has noticed the bulls have Bane. And so that's uh, where the ribbon's helping him run. 
Uh, question chat, what is the range of prices? The range of prices in this seed are, I believe, uh, 25 to 400%. Yes, they are 25 to 400 percent. So you'll see things like cabins that are 17 gold, uh, or you may see a bottle that is max priced. So Tristel has a bit of a decision here. He's lost two of his party members, um, but he has the Masamune and the Powerbok. And so um, it sounds really weird to say, but I'm wondering if an Agama grind is on the table here, uh, uh, here he in a stage four race. He just max hit or close to max hit the Agama, and I don't think he died. And I, I want to say it was 390. I glanced away like super quick, but I gotta feel like he hit him really hard. And Quad X is not, yeah, 249 didn't kill him. Yep, 249 and 239, I think that was. So this Agama has almost 500 hit points at least. So uh, not very grind friendly. We'll probably see Tristel nope out of this. But then the the other conundrum then is with only two party members, do you dare try to take carry down um, with uh, with your party in this state? Part of the issue is that carry almost almost assuredly make that one party member almost assuredly is going to roll multi hit. So I think at this point he probably checks the chest. If carry does not hit like a pansy. Uh, I think he goes and takes a, takes a shot because he has both the power glove and the the mask. But what he does not have is he does not have an invasion item, uh, as the white shirt was in the crown lock dwarf chest. So he doesn't have an invasion item yet. So he's gonna probably go test the waters with Carrie to see. Um, but all he knows he came out with, I believe, is just a ribbon. And so if he knows what that is in the future, he probably comes back to fetch this. But maybe he takes a shot at Carrie in case she's weak. I see Artea in chat uh, egging Tristel on. You know, you've got a thief, you've got Masamune, you've got Power Bonk, you've got, well, you had Quad X, but you don't have it now. <laughs> um, you know, here we go. It's going to be a, um, a a single thief against Carry um, at uh, possibly 220%. Here we go. As, as much as he could, he's kind of defensed out to the nines. We'll see what happens. Oh, seven hits. <laughs> seven swords um, into the poor little thief, and, and down he goes. <laughs> but see, he did something that I expected him to do, because it's something I did last game, is you go down there and you scout carry, almost expecting a wipe, knowing you can actually just leave and go somewhere else. Because you've done your scouting, you know there's not much, you know the ribbons down there, but you're just kind of scouting at this point. And so you know that the ribbon is down there, the feeds are going to be difficult for many of our party members. Uh, we see Salty Fry on carry, which would actually be kind of ironic if Salty Fry beats carry, because we did just get done saying that Salty Fry was in a worse position. And there wow, he goes. Quad X for the win. Goes ahead and takes carry down, who apparently rolled with <laughs> with low HP, but that's that's how the randomizer goes sometimes. And here, Tristel with the Masamune and the Power Bond can't bring carry down, but Salty, uh, who had neither of those things, uh, it takes the first fiend down. Salty Fry, if you go back and you watch this VOD, I am so sorry I doubted you. You know, meanwhile, I want to scroll back up in chat. I, I noticed uh, we have a new uh, viewer. Uh, the Solemn Songbird says that uh, did not even know that the Final Fantasy 1 randomizer was a thing until you saw the stream. Well, welcome and welcome to the Final Fantasy randomizer. Um, join the Discord. We can get you hooked up if you want to start playing with us or if you just want to download the uh, download the uh, randomizer and, uh, and play around with it. Uh, we're more than happy to help you out. Yeah, and there's a great many number of players, uh, myself included, who... who uh love helping new players getting new people involved getting people excited uh to be a part of the community uh, mostly because we're paying it forward somebody was excited to bring me into the community and so we just we like helping out new players so definitely get plugged into that discord uh feel free to jump in a new player help if you need anything we'll be there for you While you're uh, while you're doing that, make sure that you go ahead and give our three runners that we're featuring tonight a follow. Um, they are they're racing their uh, their little uh, black mage uh, legs off, um, trying to uh, trying.
trying to defeat the four fiends and uh, and take care of the phantom. Uh, so give the runners a follow. They're they're working super hard. Um, give uh, give our tracker uh, Trenton uh, a follow. And while you're at it, uh, make sure that if you haven't subscribed to Speed Gaming, uh, give that a subscription or a follow as well. And huge thanks to Feasel uh, as always, and everybody that volunteers with uh, Speed Gaming for helping to uh, make this uh, happen for us. Yeah, definitely. Definitely thanks. And we'll say it again. Thanks to the Speed Gaming guys. Thanks to Feasel getting us a lot of exposure, getting us a lot of airtime. Uh, they have been wonderful and helpful uh, to us in getting our brand sort of promoted. Salty Fry keeps teasing me. I think that's the second time he has parked in that port, making me think he has the floater, and I know he doesn't. Looks like he's heading to the Ice Cave. We're going to get our first look at Ice Cave. So super interesting. Salty Fry... Um... Uh, thinking that the mix of magic uh, that he has is a little bit better uh, to uh, take the ice cave on um, as opposed to going somewhere else. Um, you've got to wonder, though, uh, you know, Earth Cave is still on the table. Marsh Cave is still on the table, too. Um, between those three options, Fortsandra, do you agree with this? Would you go to ice as well? It's tough because if you run a six, seven pack of wizards, if they did not roll friendly hit points fire three is kind of a mediocre spell wizards have fire and ice resistance and getting that unrunnable pack is going to make it tough by and large he should be all right with everything else Fuchsia Fantasy now uh, going ahead and diving down to the lower volcano. Um, we're going to watch Tristel and Salty go ahead and uh, take on the ice cave uh, sort of in tandem here. Um, any uh, any questions that anybody might have in chat uh, about uh, what you've seen so far? Um, since we're going to be uh, seeing some new territory and, and territory we've trod before here on the uh, randomizer, now's a, great, uh, now's a great time to answer some questions. Um, I see that Zara has uh, joined us here uh, in chat. Uh, Zara's our, uh, one of our uh, lead admins um, and uh, tournament admins. Um, helped uh, make the uh, 2017 fall tournament come, uh, come alive. And uh, welcome to you, Zara. Oh, and I see you're here in chat with us too. How are you doing tonight, Zara? Greetings, greetings. I'm doing well. Just checking in here, gentlemen. Uh, enjoying the race, as you all are. Uh, that's about it. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> It's okay, Dad. Everything's fine here. We're doing just fine. Some of the other kids would have said, Dad, I haven't found Nuke yet. That is going to present a very interesting uh, sort of conundrum as this race goes on. If Nuke is at 7, it might be feasible. Maybe. But if Nuke's at 8, we're going to see some very interesting things happen. It really is an interesting question, Sforzando, because the uh, the mix of spells and abilities that we have, it actually lends toward the people that have found the Masamune in ordeals uh, going down the line here, uh, because, you know, Kraken is going to laugh at Fire 3, um, and there's really not a whole lot else there that's uh, going to be able to, to hurt either Kraken or Tiamat at this point. Yeah, for those who've been to Castle Ordeals, it's probably going to be some sort of combination of Masamune Strikes and Quad X, and just hoping that the fiends roll low hit points. As we're seeing Fugitive Fantasy take on carry, one of the things that I wanted to point out that I didn't get to when Salty and Tristel did it is that the enemy percents are up to 220%. And this means carry's maximum hit points can be 1,320. So uh, with Fire 3 being the best spell, uh, it's definitely going to pose a little bit more difficulty for anyone who has not been to Castle Ordeals yet. Uh, Fuchsia's taking the approach of, uh, of tucking that thief down into the, the uh, fourth position, um, then uses the hold spell, uh, which strikes carry. Um, that's, a, that's a great strategy that we're watching unfold here. It's very clutch uh, landing of that spell, too. Going deep into the playbook, uh, that's definitely something that uh, it shows that he's definitely a solid runner. So Carrie sits politely in place as the thief goes ahead and whacks her for 440 damage um, and down goes the uh, Fiend of Fire. Uh, Fuchsia, that was a great one. Uh, so if somebody can click that for, for Fuchsia Fantasy, that would be awesome. Yeah, definitely uh, had a strategy, knew what he wanted to do going in, went in, executed, comes out clean, no deaths, uh, good fight. 
salty for right now. Well, we're gonna take a look at the uh, chests that the um, that the frost dragons hide. Um, found uh, found the black shirt, uh, which is gonna be super useful. Uh, casts ice too. Um, that's gonna come into great uh, use when we uh, get into the sea shrine later. So Fuchsia's at the crossroads now of what to do next. Does Fuchsia go ice? Does Fuchsia go back to marsh and actually check those marsh chests? Does he further dive earth? Um, first seed. Uh, has the floater been found yet? No comment. <laughs> uh, first seed, let's put it this way. The, uh, the floater has not yet been found on screen. Uh, on screen, um, we are uh, we're playing a little hard to get with the information that we have uh, for our viewers here. Um, we uh, we are narrowing down here on screen where the floater might be hiding. Um, we've got the balance of ice cave uh, where it could be. Uh, you have the balance of marsh cave and you have the balance of earth cave, or kind of the three big places uh, where the floater could be at this point. Uh, yes, and we do have our first forfeit of the night. Len the Cat has forfeited out of the race. Uh, he was encountering some fires, and I think his party wiped, and I think he just had had enough. So GG's to Len. Uh, maybe Len will join us in chat here in a little bit. Um, that, you know, happens, uh, but you've got, uh, you've got another 10 racers or so uh, that are still on this uh, seed uh, working to uh, try to find all of the... Um, progression items uh, salty fry opening up the last few chests here and we all we have left now are the ice the the, uh, the chest that's guarded by the eye uh, what do you think uh, Sforzando would you go down there to take a peek you don't need to with warp I think they checked it and we missed it oh got it yeah it's one of those things if you have the warp spell you can drop in the hole between the three chests use the warp and you'll pop back out right on top of the hole allowing you to check all three chests without encountering the eye it saves the runners a, a boatload of time all right, uh, everybody in chat, I've got a question for you. So the only two dungeons that are left at this point are Marsh Cave and Earth Cave. We know that the crown is in the top of Earth Cave. So if you're in these uh, runner situation and you have two places to go, are you going to go check Earth next or are you going to go back into Marsh Cave? We have our second forfeit of the night. Ali Gerbrap is out. Uh, I think when you reach the 46 minute mark, 4630, and you haven't found the floater yet, I wonder what goes through some of these racers' minds. Yeah, you got to think that somebody else has found it at this point, um, which, you know, may <laughs> may very well be the case. Uh, but, you know, 46 minutes in, um, you got to you got to keep swinging because maybe everybody else is uh, is sort of in the same situation. Uh, Fuchsia, having not yet checked ordeals, is going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, Fuchsia is going to be super happy with what he finds here. Can I give you what today I learned? I did not realize the wizards could resist quad x without being under 300 hit points because tristel just did back-to-back -back cast of quad x the first one resisted he didn't do any more damage the second one hit really is i i did not know that either to be honest yeah i mean i thought that wizards would succumb to it but he didn't succumb like right away he cast a quad x and i'm pretty sure he resisted that one and then got hit with the very next one he's busting out the quake strats for the wizards though we might be here for a little bit yeah, that's the one downside to checking the ice cave is if you don't have an efficient and good means of dealing with the wizards, you can see uh, Fire 3 doing kind of on an average 45 damage or so. So Salty Fry is obliging us by taking a peek into the uh, into the marsh cave now. Um, rub arachnids uh, to meet him, um, which is really unpleasant. Uh, Salty Fry, I can't, because uh, we, yeah, he does not have the crown yet, so he's taking this dive without going into the Earth Cave first, which is, it's something that I'm kind of, uh, as, as I'm growing and developing in this league, I'm starting to wonder on non-incentivized chests, is it better to just go Earth before Ordeals? In this particular case, Ordeals is going to get you uh, a, a good amount of, of good items. Um, we haven't seen the rest of Earth Cave yet. Rub arachnids uh, joined by rub ghouls uh, in the in the marsh cave, and so uh, we have a bit of a theme going on here. Yeah, I'm wondering if this is uh, something we should go ahead and bump this stream up to TVMA because there's a lot of rubbing going on here that I'm not necessarily comfortable with.
There's the Masamune for Fuchsia Fantasy, uh, which will be an extremely welcome sight. Um, it, like we had, well, like we've said several times here, I think those people that go to uh, ordeals in this uh, in this seed, even though uh, there's no progression item here, you're going to be loaded for bear uh, with the uh, with the Masamune and the Power Bok, uh for later on in the race. Yeah, definitely. And I, I mean, I can't say it enough. It's it's almost as if uh, I won't say ordeals is required. But uh, Ordeals is strongly suggested. Again, it goes back to spell allotment in this particular case. I uh, caught a glance at another streamer. Houses are 2,000 gold this game, which is another sort of hindrance in regards to potentially farming while scouting. So Tristel deciding now where to go next. Um, you got to uh, got to think. Yep, looks like uh, looks like he's thinking Marsh as well. Sailed right by the Earth Cave. Just catching a couple of things that we missed since I don't think any of our runners are going back to the volcano. Uh, Trista will at some point. The Grey Worms have blizzard. Salty Fry checking the top of Marsh now uh, at this point. Uh, has not found uh, much yet. Um, Solari88, I, I see the, uh, the comment there in chat that you feel like the seed is much harder than yesterday's. I, I think the runners would agree with you. Um, and that's all the, uh, the vagaries of how the randomizer works. Um, in this particular seed, uh, the, uh, the progression items are playing hard to get. And, uh, the amount of resources, uh, in, in the form of black magic, uh, has spooled out very differently, uh, than in last night's seed. Aha, Salty Fry finding the Thor's Hammer. Uh, that's another uh, special item that can cast uh, Lit 2, which will be of use later. Uh, I don't believe uh, he kept it, though. I believe he just went ahead and reset back out. I think he's going to go back for that Zeus Gauntlet, though. I think he's heading, or unless he parked his ship by Northwest Castle. Which, while you're there, go back and pick up that Zeus Gauntlet. I guess he feels comfortable enough with what he's got. I think he went to Castle Ordeal, so he should still have it. He should have that Mass Immune Power Glove. Yeah, I believe Salty was the one that uh, actually uh, wiped on the uh, Zombie Ds and doesn't have any of that at this point. Oh, that's right. Then I definitely would have gone back, either kept that Thor's Hammer or gone back and gotten that Zeus Gauntlet because his Thief is going to have not a whole lot to do. So Fuchsia making it three for three now on the stream and it's going to go visit Marsh Cave. Uh, everybody avoiding Earth Cave like the plague. Um, and I, I have to say, I, our, our chat wanted everyone to go to Earth. So uh, our three runners here are bucking uh, what chat wanted to see. Um, but my guess is, uh, like Salty Fry, they're going to end up there uh, here eventually. Well, I think we covered the gauntlet. Uh, Ice Cave was not. Uh, Volcano was not. Marsh Cave was not, as we've seen some of our runners drop out of there and head elsewhere. Um, and so uh, Salty Fry is heading in the direction of the crown. The question is going to be, does he take the crown bait? And you have to think now, if, if you've been paying attention... Um, and you've, you've been you've been tracking your progress. You do know that the floater has to be somewhere, um, and so the crown is going to be a, a terrible temptation for somebody like Salty Fry, uh, who has not been here for the crown yet. Fuchsia Fantasy knows that the crown is in Earth, um, and once Fuchsia clears out Marsh, he's going to probably know to dive deeper into Earth to look for that floater um, because it, it it ain't here as far as we know. Well, the question is going to be, is it in Crown Locked Marsh? Because that is the one thing that Fuchsia has that the other two runners don't, is the already possession of the Crown and the Crown Quest. So the floater could still be in our Crown Locked Marsh. You know, with level 2 warp, I do question why Salty Fry hasn't come out with both the Thor Hammer and the Zeus Gauntlet. He had an easy means to get them out, he just opted not. 
might have uh, just might have forgotten that that was a uh, available to him. Uh, Salty Fry picks up the crown, and so all decisions on Salty Fry now. Uh, what is he uh, going to decide to do here? He's going to dive deeper. And meanwhile, uh, Fuchsia Fantasy is going to go check those uh, those uh, crown locked uh, marsh uh, chests that we haven't seen yet. Uh, Murder the Rich uh, in uh, in chat. They're asking where the Phantom is. Uh, that's a perfectly valid question. It's not a noob question. Uh, the Phantom is your first mini boss in the last dungeon uh, in the uh, Temple of Fiends uh, Revisited. He's on the third floor, uh, so you got to run a gauntlet of gas dragons and a gauntlet of bad men in order to get to the Phantom. And there's a trap tile in that last room, and he's often overlooked because as part of a normal Kill Chaos run, you just sort of plow right past him without even thinking. Um, question in chat, is Rando self-explanatory on where to go? I don't know how to answer that question, really. Not reliably, because sometimes you'll get an item that might lead you somewhere, but it could lead you nowhere. Um, the linear aspect of the game is still, um, is still valid for now. Uh, so you know when you find the floater, you know where to pick it up. Uh, that hasn't changed, just its location. The slab, you still know you have to translate it, you have to take it to Lafayne to get the chime. And the crown, you still know you take it to Astos and Matoya and the, the Elf Prince and whatnot. Those, fact those factors are still in place. For now. So I see chat reacting that Salty Fry has found the slab in the second floor of Earth Cave, um, which is a super interesting uh, discovery. Uh, it is a progression item that you need to complete the game, but it is not the progression item that you need right now. Uh, the floater is the one that you need. And so Salty has elected to warp back out, uh, back out to the overworld, and it looks like he's going to go ahead and uh, do the crown shuffle at this point. He... He's going to be in for a disappointment. Yep, we have seen, um, except for Fuchsia's checking these last couple uh, chests here, we know that the uh, the crown uh, the crown uh, troll uh, is in effect here. Uh, here's the last chest for Fuchsia to look at. I don't know, maybe he'll prove me wrong here. Crystal now in the Earth Cave. Uh, we have run out of options, uh, and all of our three featured runners uh, have, are sort of converging uh, on the Earth Cave. Um, and now we're going to watch to see whether or not Tristel uh, decides uh, to go ahead and uh, do the crown bait. Uh, Fuchsia Fantasy has opened that last chest, and it was only a silver gauntlet. Which I can now confidently say that, yes, the Earth Cave has the floater. And it's got to be in the third level, too, because um, you need to have that floater, uh, because we haven't seen the ruby yet, either. Um, that's the only way uh, to get to save Sarda, so you can get the rod, so that you can complete Earth Cave. I am watching... <laughs> this is funny. I'm watching the streamers off-stream, which includes cams and microphones for a lot of our racers, and Will Bloodworth, who's one of our famous racers, is in this race. He literally just found the floater as you were saying that, and he had the most hilarious laugh-slash-facepalm you could possibly imagine, because he is a big proponent of diving into the Earth Cave. He just didn't make it far enough when he went in his first dive. <laughs> so the, the randomizer giveth and the randomizer taketh away. Um, at least he's not throwing his controller. I think he's gone through about three or four of these so far uh, during the league. And so uh, the, the controllers uh, go to Will's house to die. So we know that the floater is in Earth Cave. If you could watch Salty Fry's screen, if he had his camera up. Uh, you might see the the look of a man who will be bitterly disappointed when he discovers the floater is not crown locked. And we're watching a lot of crown trolling today because I think Tristel is also heading in that direction uh, at this point. It's 
So both of our go mode, our official go mode items are in the Earth Cave in B2 and B3. Uh, kind of an interesting location for them both to be in, for, you know, for them to b both be so concentrated. Not only that, so we had Crown in B1, <laughs> Slab in B2, and Earth in B3, or uh, the Floater in uh, B3 Earth. Um, that's a loaded, loaded Earth Cave. Um, this is th this seat is going to be talked about for a while. Somewhere RT is watching and he's just going, Excellent. But that does make three games in a row in which the floater was contained somewhere in the Earth Cave, which... Eh, I'm glad I'm not playing. Yeah, exactly. Fuchsia Fantasy, uh, excited, but also confused uh, by finding the slab uh, there in, in B2. Uh, again, not what, it was, not what you were looking for, but you're happy to see it. I think it came down to because honestly, I think at that point it came down to who had fire three, and I think I think fire three, but maybe no no lightning spells were probably keeping people away from B three because you just you didn't want to encounter those wizards. I think that's probably what turned a lot of people away from B three, which you know the the winner would probably be the one who you know opted to gamble and 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 test his luck against the wizards or try to avoid them altogether. And so I'll do a recap here. We are one hour in. Uh, welcome to the Final Fantasy Randomizer League. Uh, this is your stage four flags. And so you're watching our runners use one thief and three black mages to try to get through, oh, a good 90% of the game. Uh, progression items have been uh, super hard to get uh, for this seed. Um, TNT we found almost instantly, and then it was a whole lot of nothing until uh, runners decided to go to the Earth Cave. Uh, Earth Cave uh, held a, a, a troll crown, uh, in the first level, but then Slab in level two and the Floater in level three, which Fuse of Fantasy is uh, on his way to find now, uh, that will get you to go mode. Um, but it is uh, one hour in, and uh, of our 10 or 11 runners that are doing this race, nobody has finished yet. Um, and so the race continues. Did you see that? He might, Salty Fry might be face palming a little bit. He just destroyed a gold bracelet. <laughs> melt, melt the bracelet down. Just go for it. That's just money. Um, have we seen the bottle at this point for any of our featured runners? Because, I mean, that's the one thing we don't necessarily know what the bottle price is yet. Yeah, no, we have not seen the bottle price or where it is. Um, and so a max price bottle is probably going to make Salty extra salty. He's already going to be salty when he finds where the floater is. I have chat. Uh, <laughs> chat is uh, disagreeing with itself. One says that the bottle is in Provoca, and the other one says it's in Elfland. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. <laughs> in all seriousness, I think we missed it. Fuchsia Fantasy, super happy to have found that Masamune, uh, because the Masamune is uh, taking the uh, wizards down. And lo and behold, there is your floater. Um, and he's going <laughs> to... I don't know if I agree with this either. You're you're in the third level. Just go ahead and kill the vampire while you're there. Yeah, uh, it's more steps that you got to take and you don't have the rod to move on. It's probably a good play to go ahead and get out so we can grab the rod. Because killing the vampire nets you absolutely nothing. You have to take extra steps, take more encounters to go where you already need to go once you bring the rod anyway. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I'm a lower tier runner of the Final Fantasy Randomizer because I don't think like that. I'm like, oh, I'm already here. I'll just go, you know... Say hi to the vampire. So Fuchsia Fantasy is our first featured runner to f actually find the floater so that we can progress through the, re through the uh, rest of this seed. Um, Salty Fry and Tristle are closing in on it, um, but uh, Fuchsia is going to be the first one to go ahead and grab that airship. Translating the slab so that he can speak uh, Toga Party people later. Um, so, uh, Sforzando, once you get your airship, are you done checking chests at this point? I would... 
Man, it's a tough call. I would say so. Um, you're gonna have a handful of free of what we call free chests to check. Um, there's gonna be five in the sea shrine. You're gonna, still gonna have your waterfall cave chests. Cardia Islands are still relatively free. You may want to find a, a potentially another ribbon. One's pretty good if you're gonna put all your chips into Thief. Um, but you'll have Cardia Island, which is mostly free. You'll have the Waterfall Cave, which is mostly free. Six there. You'll have five in the Sea Shrine, at least four in the Sky Castle. If you feel like Barrage B1 is kind, or 1F one, uh, one is kind of free, there's eight there. Um, there's a handful of relatively free chests you can check, depending on what your needs are. Largely, our runners are probably going to be looking for ribbons, so maybe, maybe not. One more wouldn't hurt, but um, if you feel like you're behind, then then I, I wouldn't do Mirage B1. I would... I'd probably just uh, leave that off. I'd probably check all the other ones. Yeah, I tend to agree. I, I think a lot hinges upon whether a uh, runner went to Ordeals and found the Masamone and the Power Bonk. Um, if you have those two items, I think you're probably close to done checking chests. If you don't... Um, uh, Nuke has not yet been seen on screen, which means it's a level 7 or 8 spell. I don't believe we've seen either Bane or Brack either, um, which are both going to be useful uh, for, for later on here if you try to get past Kraken and Tiamat. Um, without any either of those three spells, um, I don't know how comfortable I would feel uh, trying to finish this game right now, no matter at what level I'm at. You've got the white shirt, which is actually going to probably benefit you more, um, you know, and then put all your chips into Thief, drop Thief into the fourth slot in boss fights, load up on white shirt charges, and hope that the Fiend doesn't take the 12.5% shot at your Thief first. Load up on Power Glove charges. Um, maybe if you find the Defense Sword, that would be awesome. So I gotta say, this has been a super interesting seed so far. The uh, the progression items um, are in very odd places um, in, in out of the way areas uh, for our runners, which has thrown that for a loop. And then we've been saying this over and over again, but the uh, the the resources that are at play uh, for these runners um, are, are going to cause this uh, this flag set here and this seed to be uh, uh, quite interesting down the stretch here. So Fuchsia has made his way back to the vampire, um, and he will say hello to the vampire and probably goodbye to the vampire in short order. Uh, vampire not enjoying uh, casts of uh, Fire 3. Oh, you don't want the upper left, you want the bottom right one, Salty. Bottom right one is Cobra's, top left one is Wizard's. Sleep Wizard's, no doubt. A rare ooze encounter here for Fuchsia, uh, down in the third or fourth level of, uh, of Earth Cave, and they hit quite hard. Yeah, that's going to be actually an interesting question, Is and, and I've kind of not really seen a whole lot of what's good in the encounter table, but did he power cycle before coming down here? Because that's an encounter 8 on that floor, I believe, and so the question is going to be, okay, how soon will that encounter 8 come up in other dungeons? Uh, for example, um, let's see, uh, Encounter 8 is uh, the Gas Dragon in the Waterfall, if I recall correctly. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Warmech is uh, Group 7, right? Yes, it is. Having encountered Warmech in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back times on the same Bridge of Destiny, I know that it is Group 7. I see our uh, our chat is thirsty for Warmack. Um, I don't know if we have any Group 7 encounters uh, in the table yet tonight. We'll have to see. is going to give us our first look at Lich. Lich is one we usually don't give any respect to. Lich can have up to 880 hit points if he rolled high, which still means he'll melt under this uh, barrage of Fire 3 mass bean strikes. Uh, in chat, I see uh, 
Rai Rai the Raiju uh, asking uh, what spell Quad X is. Uh, it's an instant death spell, um, and it instantly uh, defeats an enemy that has a current hit point count of 300 or left. Uh, 300 or less, I should say. Um, and that uh, that is a, a current total. And so you can hit an enemy a few times, get it under 300 hit points, and then Quad X will be effective. To be honest, Forzando, I, I don't think I've ever seen a spell in any other RPG that works quite like Quad X does. I, I can't think of any other examples of a spell where you have to lower somebody's... Um, lower somebody's hit points to a certain level before it becomes effective like that. Uh, Fuchsia Fantasy uh, diving into Onrak um, to go ahead and, uh, and take a peek at the uh, items that are available there. Um, it's been a while since we um, went bottle shopping, and so I have to wonder... Uh, if uh, Fuchsia Fantasy does not uh, remember or know where the bottle is, uh, I do believe that we saw it uh, in the uh, the lower part of the uh, continent. Uh, chat said it was either in uh, Provoca or Elfland, so we'll have to take a look there. Yeah, and so um, I think just because people spent so much time hunting the floater that they kind of kind of forgot some of the things at the beginning of the game, which is perfectly logical. Notepad strats for the win. Every, I, I've got a notepad that I uh, that I play with with a, a bunch of scribbles um, all over it for each uh, race that I do. Um, it, uh, it it only works though if uh, if I make a, a new page every time. I actually started following uh, <laughs> following uh, notes for a previous race once, uh, and that sort of defeated the purpose of the entire operation. The worst part is when you've played like two or three consecutive games, and you're trying to remember where things were based on what happened in other games. Yeah, not recommended. So we got some blue stakes on the board for Fuchsia Fantasy. I don't know if he... Hello, T-Rex. don't know if he manipulated into that or if that was just luck. The T-Rex is looking at uh, thief stakes um, and thinking that tonight might be some good eating. Oh, but he is definitely beefy. <laughs> Fuchsia stopping to go ahead and temper and fast his thief so that his, uh, that his party can dine on T-Rex this evening. <laughs> and then his thief died. Ah, oh, rip. Well, well, now, well, now what? Uh, no, now he wants to run. <laughs> So no, uh, no uh, T-Rex stakes for Fuchsia Fantasy's party this evening. Which is a shame. Uh, Tristol has, juicy, uh, they really are. They're they're much tastier than the red variety. Um, Tristol has uh, has rejoined uh, everybody in the Earth Cave. Found the slab. Uh, is probably confused, um, excited, and angry all at the same time, um, and is uh, still searching for the floater there. And Salty, we're about to see his level of salt as he comes to find the uh, floater down here. And oh, we've got Gerwolves with Stone Poison. Frost Ruru's on Fuchsia Fantasy's... Uh screen there um he's uh going and get, going ahead to get grab that chime uh, so that uh, he can uh open up the mirage tower uh but still needs to go uh, take a peek also into waterfall um to uh to take care of uh the uh, robot there and grab that cube uh so we've got a couple of a uh, couple more uh progression places to go here yet And there's our floater. Um, actually, and it's funny because in that particular chest, that is one that's actually considered, it's growing to be considered one of the free chests in Earth Cave if you were already in go mode. Because it takes only a handful of steps to get up and back, and it's just one straight line. And so some people like checking that chest even if you're in go mode.
All right. Whoever said that the bottle was in Provoca, um, you are you are sadly incorrect. Um, we'll have to go somewhere else to find the bottle today. Yeah, the custom sprites you see on Fuchsia Fantasy, that is what is called Valkyries of Light. It is by one of our speedrunners, Terralyn, who uh, painstakingly went and created female versions of all of the characters. Um, and it's, in my opinion, it's a very, very fantastic uh, ROM hack. Uh, it only changes those sprites for all 12 classes. Um, and that can actually, uh, you can get with her on our Discord. If you follow our Discord, uh, she can get you hooked up with the ROM hack for that. Uh, Fuchsia is still on a bottle hunt here. Um, Ali, uh, who uh, forfeited out of the race a little bit earlier today, says that it's in Elfland. Uh, Fuchsia will be disappointed here. <laughs> um, there's only a couple of places left to go, Fuchsia, though. You'll, you'll find it shortly. It's always in the last place you look. Uh, both Tristel and uh, Salty Fry have... Uh, have retrieved their uh, floaters and will be uh, joining the fun here shortly. All right, now the fun begins. Um, Fuchsia Fantasy has both of the Sea Shrine and Sky Castle and the Waterfall uh, yet to complete. And here's where the rubber is going to hit the road, so to speak, um, because the uh, the available spells uh, for our three Black Mages uh, in this seed uh, have not been all that great. Um, and so now it's going to come down to a lot of very, very careful play and, and, uh, and good planning in order to get through these final dungeons. So Salty uh, lands in the Northwest Continent. Uh, two of the three dungeons he needs to complete are here. Uh, the waterfall uh, is up at the top of the riverbed here. Um, and Onrak uh, holds the Sea Shrine. And so let's see where Fuchsia decides to go first. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. With a, with, with a regular bottle placement uh, in the Southern Continent, I would probably consider the vanilla order of uh, checking your bottle translate uh getting your chime and then sailing over to uh on rack and doing sea shrine because you still have to go pick up the cube for mirage tower and so in in seeds in which the uh bottles in the southern hemisphere or in gaia or the waterfall basically where the bottle is not in on rack uh the sea shrine then mirage tower is usually the play in seeds in which the bottles in on rack based on proximity you can usually go mirage first So the enemies grow a little stronger uh, here in the waterfall. There are gas dragons uh, lurking uh, in this waterfall. They're relatively rare, but we do know that there are some rare encounters uh, in the table tonight. Uh, so we'll see whether or not any of those show up. Uh, it is nice, though, uh, here uh, in the waterfall that uh, warp and those uh, warp and those warps charges uh, are going to get you out of here right quick uh, once you uh, once you finish up. Yeah, if that encounter 8 occurs somewhere near the front of the table, it might be a good idea to go ahead and scout those gas dragons, because on the same floor as Phantom, the gas dragons are encounters 3, 4, and 5. So there is a good likelihood you're going to find the gas dragon encounter on your way to the Phantom. It's good to know whether or not you can take them down with the resources you have. You know, Sforzando, that's another encounter group that's going to be a real problem here for our runners with the way that this speed, this seed is um, is giving the magic. Uh, there's really nothing out there uh, that's going to that's going to do a whole lot of damage to the gas dragons uh, tonight. You're going to have to melee them down one at a time. It looks like Fuchsia's not even opting to check the waterfall cave chests. I do know that the black shirt was cited earlier uh, in the seed. That will be a, of a little bit of use uh, against gas dragons, um, but this is uh, this is shaping up to be a pretty brutal finish. Yeah, 
Yeah, gas dragons are probably the water encounter of that particular floor. One that will slow you down immensely as you're trying to get to the finish line. Future Fantasy is uh, taking us into the Sea Shrine for the first time. Uh, there's a whole host of unpleasant things in here that can uh, end a run real quick, too. Uh, unrunnable Sayhags um, are probably not uh, going to kill you, um, but uh, if the lobsters have their uh, rubber bands taken off, uh, watch out. I, I ran into an encounter, uh, an ambush encounter of seven lobsters um, a couple of nights ago, and within one, <laughs> one turn, uh, my entire party was gone. Yeah, running definitely helps out in a pinch. That's still Edgeworth's joke. Ouch. Uh, ghosts hitting hard tonight. Yeah, ghosts are one of those encounters you'll, you're you all right with seeing if you have a light axe or fire. Like, fire is one of those things that you bring uh, uh, kind of for that exact encounter. But yeah, they, they can truck you pretty good. Interesting that uh, uh, Vampire was guarding the katana. We haven't seen the tail yet. Yeah, there's several progression items that are sort of uh, hiding out this evening. The tail hasn't been found. We haven't seen the adamant or the loot either. Um, I'm sorry, adamant or uh, the ruby. Um, you know, none of those three are required to finish this seed. Um, but uh, it's looking like either Sea Shrine or uh, Sky Castle was the place all of those were hiding today. Fuchsia's, in addition to the waterfall cave chests, Fuchsia is opting to forego the three free three relatively free chests in that room on the right there. I believe somebody last night called it the Sharknado room, uh, which I uh, I love. I think that's awesome. So we get down now to the uh, fifth basement floor of the uh, Sea Shrine, and the uh, stakes go up a little bit. Uh, there are unrunnable water encounters down here, um, and the um, f here's two lobsters. We'll see how they hit tonight. See? Running helps in a pinch. It really does. It, my problem was that they ambushed me. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> So everyone, nuke sea trolls um, on on order for this evening. Uh... <laughs> well, only one monster, not a fiend in the game, can have nuke, and so now we know where it is. As Tristel is taking his shot at Lich, which we give no respect to. He's the Rodney Dangerfield of Final Fantasy Randomizer. <laughs> Oh, if if only Lich could uh, have the nuke spell that the uh, sea trolls do tonight. <laughs> and sometimes Lich 2 is a little trolly. Like, I don't give Lich 2 respect either, but sometimes he's just trolly enough to complain about it. So good news, everyone. Salty Fry has also joined us now in the sea shrine and, and may also see the, uh, the sea trolls uh, who are living up to their name this evening. Oh, I see. I'm watching runners off stream, and uh, two runners off stream had opted to do sky before C, and now I think I understand why. Boy, now I've got to start doing some math. At, at what point uh, do you need to level black mages up to so that they can survive a nuke charge? I mean, sea trolls are not that prevalent, but you're going to probably see them when you're in here reliably you want to get to 21 doesn't guarantee you but 21 pushes you over the 300 hit point threshold i believe or it gets you right up against the 300 hit point um which nuke can go over 300 certainly but it gives you a better than not chance of surviving nuke now if you get two sea trolls there is no amount of levels in the world that's going to save you Look at this. Salty ran away from a pack of sea trolls, doesn't know that they have nuke, and he has threaded the needle here and has made it to Kraken. Has no idea that he has dodged the uh, nuke bullet, so to speak, here. But yeah. now now he's got to deal with Kraken. Yeah, and so we're going to get our take our first look on stream of what Kraken looks like uh, with all of his tentacles. 
He is taking the put thief in the back and load him up with tempers, fasts, and white shirt charges. And I see uh, a Vorpal on him, too. So it doesn't have the Masamune, but we're going to try to do this with Vorpal strats. Five hits for 500. Five hits is going to be a lot of charges of white shirt. I almost wonder if he's going to be able to overcome this. If he can get him down to one hit, it's like one hit for 100, which he might be able to survive. But it's going to be a little bit before he gets to that point. A second white shirt charge comes out, so that's going to help immensely. Yep, that's a, that's a big help. Let's see, uh, let's see what Kraken does this time. That's seven hits for 341 damage, and so... Um, Kraken reaching out and touching uh, Salty Fry's. Uh, yeah, if I were, if I were salty, places. I would have I would have started swinging because you, you don't even know what his defense or absorber evade looks like. I probably would have taken a swing because seven hits. You're not overcoming that with the white shirt charge. You need <laughs> several more. Kraken now playing with his food uh, casts hold uh, on the other black mage to, to stun him in place. And then fire too because he wants to cook them up a little bit. Fuchsia is going to take his look at. Kraken. He has the mass immune though, so that might make a difference in this fight. Alright, Kraken is uh, is only hitting at one point now, um, and so he might be out of the woods here for Salty. Uh, meanwhile, Fuchsia is up to it now as, as well. Unfortunately, it was a 91 point swing, and then a 235 point swing, <laughs> and for good measure, he cast fast on himself. Awesome. So now Kraken can hit you 16 times. <laughs> <laughs> that's where that's where I feel like the white shirt's not really going to help him beyond that point. Well, it was only one hit for 133, so maybe I'm wrong, but he still died, so... It looks okay. like Salty's going to take the route <laughs> that some others have taken and is going to go attempt Mirage Tower first. Oh, and you know what? Fuchsia Fantasy for, for everything there. He, he wiped to the nuke sea trolls, but he got past Kraken and now runs into a pack of unrunnable waters before he gets out of the uh, sea shrine. Uh, I love this seed. <laughs> As if it just weren't enough. You come in here, you get past the nuke trolls, you take down the boss. No, not enough. And waters are not a great encounter here. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot to deal with them. This is—it's a time suck more than anything. He's got three uh, three characters up, and so he should be able to get through this. And unfortunately, when his best damaging spell is fire three, um, he has to rely on more temper strats on his on his uh, thief there. All right, Fuchsia safely getting through the uh, sea shrine of death. Um, and, uh, and escaping with a lit orb. Uh, got three of the four now. Only the water floor remains for Fuchsia Fantasy. Um, Salty is, uh, <laughs> is deciding to go somewhere else after, after uh, meeting the delight that is Kraken. Oh, you know what? Salty's going back for the Masamune and uh, back for the Power Bonk. I can't blame him. You know, Gar's asking who rolled this mess. I'm going to have to throw you under the bus, Maya. I I happily take credit for this. This is this is awesome. <laughs> All right, so only one. Uh, dungeon left uh, for Fuchsia Fantasy, a Mirage Tower and uh, Sky Castle 1-2 combo. Um, we'll have to see whether or not uh, whether or not we uh, we make this seed truly special with uh, with a Warmech sighting or two. And so uh, if you want to see Warmech tonight, Warmech only comes out when uh, when Bless RNG is spammed in chat. Um, that's his uh, that's his cue to come and visit. I gotta tell you, Sportsando, I totally agree with what Salty Fry is doing. Uh, he's gotta be kicking himself that he didn't uh, come back for the uh, Masamune and uh, Power Bonk when he was here earlier. Yeah, and honestly, I wonder if he would have had enough warp charges to get out. Um, because at level two, you could almost spam them all day long. You might be able to make the entrance from wherever you are if you wanted to avoid that zombie D fight. Because they have a lot of hit points and lit two and ice two, so. Speaking of ice, too, uh, vampires uh, making uh, work of uh, Fuchsia Fantasy's party here. I wonder if you warp out and try again here? I 
no fuchsia fantasy feeling like he has enough uh, resources um even with the downed party member remember there's no white magic in this seed and in any way shape or form and so you're not bringing your uh, party members back up unless you know about a dungeons and get back to a town to bring it back up almost lost a second black mage there so i think if he loses one more he should maybe consider at least consider resetting the problem is, is like what you really need is you need fast and temper charges, and so it, maybe you only need one black mage for that. But the other black mages are also going to absorb hits. So it's another um, beautiful use of quad X that we saw there. He got the uh, blue dragon down uh, into where he believed would be under uh, 300 hit points. Um, so we learned something good there. The uh, the bad men uh, hit like uh, uh, bad wimps. Uh, this seed, and so uh, they will not be too much of a, a threat uh, in Temple of Fiends. That never happens to me. No, they hit me for hundreds of damage uh, every time as well. Now Salty's going to take another shot at the Zombie Ds to see if he can overcome their uh, large amount of hit points and uh, propensity to cast AoE spells in his party. All right, here we go. We are uh, nearing Warmax Zone, uh, and Fuchsia Fantasy has uh, not seen any uh, strange encounters here yet. So uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see whether or not the uh, good old RNG table uh, has Warmax in play for us. The Warmax Zone. Would you consider this a zone of danger? I would. Uh, a zone of destiny. I'm watching the. <laughs> I'm watching the off-stream runners, and Will Oops. Bloodworth is definitely very animated at the moment. I'm not quite sure what set him off, but he is in the Sea Shrine trying his luck. So uh, Fuchsia Fantasy uh, did not find Warmech, but found Thunder Red Hydras, um, and his Black Mages are gone. All we have left is a Thief. This is definitely a seed I am glad I am commentating on. Oh, and so Kara the, Kara the Thief is going to give this a shot. There's 225 damage, but unfortunately that is not going to be enough for Fuchsia Fantasy. Um, and he's going to go ahead and give this another shot. So Tiamat proving to be, or at least not Tiamat, but the steps up to Tiamat proving it's not easy there either. So we are now one hour and 30 minutes uh, into this seed, uh, which was supposed to be fast. These were supposed to be faster seeds. <laughs> um, and here we are uh, with our, our on-screen runner, Fuchsia Fantasy, is still trying to finish off the uh, the fourth uh, Fiend dungeon so that he can dive uh, Temple of Fiends Revisited and, and meet the Phantom. Um, most of the uh, progression items, uh, in fact, all of the progression items we need have been found at this point. Um, but we also found Sea Trolls with Nuke, um, Kraken, uh, that can cast fast on uh, herself and hit you 16 times, and Fuchsia Fantasy runs into the Blue Dragon um, in the not Blue Dragon spot. We heard you like Blue Dragons. Here, have another one. Salty Fry now uh, playing with the uh, sea trolls again. Um, I still don't think he knows that they know Nuke. He's playing with fire there. So Tristel's giving a, another attempt here at the Blue Dragon. Now you have to remember that Tristel, or uh, I'm sorry, Fuchsia Fantasy has has wiped twice um, in this uh, seed already. Uh, he wiped uh, earlier, and now he's uh, wiped at Tiamat once as well. Um, so uh, you know they've got to all of these runners got to be feeling like they're behind. 
Uh, speaking of behind, if you were looking for a winner from our featured racers, they cannot be found here. Our first racer has crossed the finish line. It is Ice Blue with an SRL time of 133.50. So GG's to X Ice Blue. Um, clears off his chaos point uh, for this uh, stage, um, for uh, for the stage floor uh stage four flags um and uh we'll see if we can maybe get him uh in the uh, chat room here to uh, uh, talk with us um interview style as we watch our other three featured runners uh, try to finish this off yeah and it makes me sad because for every runner every every runner that clears their zero uh it uh puts them just ahead of me and it makes me a little sad And poor Salty, uh, I think, uh, has um, realized what uh, the rest of the runners uh, learned earlier. <laughs> um, and, uh, and that uh, uh, the uh, Sea Shrine is not friendly today. Uh, we are joined in uh, chat here by X Ice Blue, um, coming in first place, uh, one hour, 33 minutes and 50 seconds. And I'm sure you have some choice words for this seed. <laughs> How about that nuke? Uh, how many times were you hit by it? Um, I got nuked on my first dive to Sea Shrine. Then I immediately dropped out of there and ran to a uh, Mirage. I was like, uh, yeah, peace out. Um, and then my second, like when I went back after Mirage and Sky, I went back at like 24. I got nuked right before Kraken and only lost one Black Mage, so I just went ham on it. And I survived that fight against Kraken just by using the Zeus Gauntlet. I had two, I had two stacks of uh, white shirt up, and I Zeus Gauntlet my way through that. I'm gonna assume you didn't go to Castle Ordeals. Is that a correct? I did not. I actually, I actually in my chat, Artea was like, Earth Dive or Riot, and so. To appease Artea, I did an Earth Dive, and I was in go mode immediately after Earth Cave. Yeah, I was watching your chat, your your um, channel off stream, and it was interesting that you opted not to take the Crown Bait. Oh no, he told me Earth Dive or Riot all the way to Va Vampire. But once I found the Crown, the Slab, and the Floater, I warped out of there as fast as I possibly could. That was a seed, for sure. I gotta tell you, uh, Ordeals had uh, had some tasty treats, though, for people that went there. Uh, the uh, Ordeals, uh, not hiding any progression items today, but did have the Masamune and the Power Bonk um, oh. that, are, that are there. Um, and I, I swear, that is that is keeping some of these runners in the game here. Um, it's uh, Otherwise, this has been... Uh, been just a, an absolute comic, uh, comical riot to watch. Uh, so, I don't know if y'all watched, but I did temper my thief nine times with a silver dagger, and he was hitting Tiamat for 500s. I didn't even have fast up. I just tempered him like nine or ten times, and he was doing like 500 per hit. So we have a second finisher. Quicklit has crossed the finish line, has defeated Phantom. Second place with an SRL time of 136.34. We're going to try and get him in here. So Ice Blue, uh, while we're watching uh, Fuchsia Fantasy uh, dive now into Temple of Fiends Revisited, um, the, the magic in this seed was uh, surprisingly uh, sparse, to be honest. Um, you had Fire 3, and that was really about it. Um, what did you think of, um, of how the resources spooled out? Uh, you had Quad X. What else did you need? <laughs> Quad X literally carried me through this seed. Because I had... I got... Um, my thief and one of my black mages died in volcano on my di my first my dive down there, and I had one black mage left, and I just I I just quad xed on the first turn, and she died in one and she died, so she had under 300 health. So <laughs> I lucked out there. Um, but yeah, quad x carried me through that entire seed. It was it's it's a very powerful spell, very underrated. I I have to note here up in the upper right hand corner, uh, Tristol just sailed merrily uh, through the uh, sea shrine without seeing nuke sea trolls and killed Kraken like she was nothing. Um, and that's uh, that's what we call Tristol luck, everyone. Um, and he's, uh, you know, when you're good, uh, the luck always is, it seems to be in your favor. 
Oh, he'll get a kick out of when when he finds out who had nuke. <laughs> I think Salty Fry's in the same position. I don't remember if Salty Fry saw the nukes or not. Yeah, uh, Salty Salty saw it on the second dive in. Which uh, which channel are we on? So I can nope. tune it. We are on SG3. Uh, meanwhile, I see that Quicklit has joined us. Quicklit, congratulations on a second place finish. Thank you. I'm just glad it wasn't way after the uh, first place finish. <laughs> uh, tell us, uh, tell us about the fun and entertainment that uh, that you saw in this seed. There, I mean, every single dungeon had something terrible. It was like trying to dodge a minefield. But uh, Earth and Sea Shrine were both really pretty awful. Um, did you? I tried. Did you do an Earth dive first? No, no, oh. I did uh, volcano, then ice, and then ordeals. Um, and then I finally went Earth. Um, uh, so the only thing I didn't do was Marsh, but um, I was really glad I did Ordeals because it had Mazmoon. I uh, I ran through that sea with a silver dagger on my thief because I didn't go to Ordeals. <laughs> oh man, yeah. The uh, how are you killing fiends? Uh, let's see. I stacked four or five white shirts against Tiamat since he was only a physical attacker, and I tempered the ever living crap out of my thief and he was hitting for 500s with a silver dagger oh see i was hitting for about 1100 <laughs> and then after about three tempers and a power bunk kraken kraken was really strong uh but had low hp so i just yeah, zeus he had gauntlet. Next to nothing. i did zeus gauntlet until he died and then carrie just died to one quad x without even any damage on her Oh no! And meanwhile, on the screen, Salty Fry has found the nuke sea trolls again, uh, oh. unfortunately, um, and is going to go ahead and, and try this again. So the RNG, uh, the RNG is being unkind to Salty Fry, who was who is in uh, in real contention for a good finish here, um, and his uh, his run is coming to a screeching halt. On the flip side, Fuchsia Fantasy has finished in third place at official SRL time of one thirty nine twelve. We'll try and get him in here as well. Yeah, the uh, I, I the first time I went to Volcano, I went all the way down, did the, the Red D treasure chest, and then I just warped out. I wasn't going to try and fight Carrie. I really wish I had now, because she was pretty easy. She and, had less um, than 300 had, HP, because Quad X I had Sleep 2. I got Sleep 2 to land on her on the first turn, so she never did anything to me. So that that probably would have saved me at least a couple minutes. But yeah, it was just th this was all about who could get through Sea Shrine and Earth Cave faster. Did anyone go Earth Cave really early? Uh, I assume if anyone will would have. I did Earth Cave first. Everything. I did Earth Cave first. Uh, I was in go mode. I checked all the free chests with Crown and stuff like that, and then I just started going. That's why I only had a silver dagger. See, I found the crown, and I thought about leaving Earth Cave and trying to find everything else. Um, and I'm really, really glad that I didn't, because I, I never even did the crown um, quest, because the slab and floater were both in uh, a little bit later in Earth. I was fishing for equipment. Uh, I ended up finding two ribbons and uh, Zeus and Mage Staff. Yeah, that's for, I didn't have any of that. I had the black shirt um, as my only AoE item, and I had the Mazmoon, so I was pretty much set. That's how I killed all the fiends. Yeah, Mazmoon would have been nice. Salty is on the the terror floor where sea trolls have a high spawn rate. How was the encounter table for you guys? I, I didn't really manage to keep up with uh, any good long runs right at the beginning. There was a couple of like 60 or 70 runs, but there wasn't anything after like, really two, spectacular. After um, the first encounter was pretty short, but then two was okay, and then three was, was decent. I did have. Did you have to fight any gas dragons in. in uh... I did. Uh, two casts of Ice 2 uh, took him out. Well, that and uh, Zeus Gauntlet took him out. Yeah, they had really high evasion. I couldn't hit him with my teeth at all. But, um... Yeah, I managed to get him down with AOEs. I laughed because Phantom hit my, uh... My bottom Black Mage for 60. I was like, okay, he's not really that strong. And then the next attack, he hit my, uh... Hit one of my other Black Mages for, 
for 300, and I was like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, um, it's interesting. I don't know if he did a first dive, but Will Bloodworth found the floater pretty late and kind of face palmed a little bit, which is, you know, it's it's funny because that's one of his, you know, like Artia, he really loves the Earth Cave, but didn't dive oh, yeah. far enough or didn't otherwise find it. Maybe got away from his own game or something like that. And he was very disappointed in a salty, laughing, sarcastic laughing kind of way. I think the people that forfeited early probably should have stuck with it a little longer. Like, I think everybody went to the wrong place. Um, diving that deep into Earth when Earth was full of stuff that wanted to, you know, stone you and just be all around terrible was... Yeah, I was kind of watching out of the corner of my eye with the other streamers, and when I saw Ice Blue find the floater, I thought, okay, this is this is going to be one of those runs that it's going to be really quick and no one's going to know why. Uh, but then when I saw him struggling, I thought, okay, maybe there's it's never a guarantee that finding the floater early is going to lead to an early time. Um, and so sticking with it, perhaps at least waiting until the first dot done comes in to see where you kind of stand. So Tristel has entered into the uh, Temple of Fiends uh, Revisited. Um, we've got Frost Giants and uh, Rurus on the uh, screen. Um, that's an unrunnable encounter that's uh, melting to Fire 3. Um, and so uh, he'll be uh, wandering down to the uh, Phantom shortly. Um, to our runners that have already finished, uh, did the Phantom um, cause any uh, issues for any of you? Uh, no, Phantom was... I mean, I just I attacked with my Thief and then Fire 3 with everyone else until he died. I think it took two rounds. I had a light axe and like multiple fire threes. <laughs> he was a little be he seemed a little beefy. Uh I did about seven hundred plus to him. Until um, he died. Yeah, in my in my notes, Phantom's max HP can be seven ninety two. Yeah, that sounds pretty close. So now we've got Tristel taking his shot at the Phantom. Seemingly high absorb for that Phantom. The Mass Mune only doing three, three hit for 51 damage. Oh wait, we got we got Tristel finishing. Hold on, we got to drop the. And so Tristel does finish. He is our second featured runner to finish. He comes in fourth place with an SRL time of 1.46.35. So we're on board still with uh, Salty Fry uh, down in the uh, lower left, who who did uh, get his uh, water orb lit there. Is working on the uh, air orb. Uh, the earth orb is uh, pretty, uh, pretty quick, um, and so he'll be uh, along uh, quickly as well. Just to walk through our last three runners, Minochi, on his way to Phantom, ran into a four-pack of gas dragons, knocking out three of his black mages. Oops. Yikes. We've got Will Bloodworth, who just beat the Lich fight, and we've got Zarnax in the Sea Shrine. Those are the last of our runners, plus Salty Fry you see here on the screen. I think the gas dragons, what, they had lit too? Uh, they had... Poison. They had damage no. poison. Yeah, they had damage poison, because I know they hit me with that. Ooh. Yeah, so, um, how did you, saw, uh, uh, quickly, you, you went to Ordeals, how did you feel about the zombie dragons? Oh, they were, I, I only fought one. Um, it was beefy, but I mean, yeah, I had the Mazmoon, I tempered up my, or I, I fasted and I think I cast one temper on my, uh, my thief. Does, and then I does just anybody, fired Does anybody want to inform Tristel of the, <laughs> what he missed out on? You didn't even see them? That's ridiculous. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Tristel, did you see what was in Sea Shrine? I don't think his mic oh, is working. Oh, he said he fixed his mic. Oh, just kidding. His mic is not fixed. Close that Discord and reopen it. 
see this is where tris luck really hurts him is in game <laughs> he does awesome but when it comes spectacular to... luck in game but then his mic is just like nah just kidding all right is this better there we yeah, go. There go gg that's... man so uh did you... talk and it didn't work at all i saw sea troll thunder if that's what you're talking about sea nope. troll thunder no thunder. no no thunder is, is... It red sahagan I, I missed out on the sahagan and the ghost fight i'm just that lucky i guess no 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 thunder is the least of your worries sea trolls had first spell nuke oh well that's fun i got i got nuked right before kraken it was it was beautiful yep. salty fry here has taken two wipes to kraken's uh, we have a fifth place finisher. It is Minochi with a SRL time of one forty nine thirty seven. Which leaves Salty Fry, who is on his third. He has actually not gone and beaten Lich yet. Uh, he has not opted to go back and finish the job. We have off stream. We have Will Bloodworth, who is heading towards the Mirage Sky Castle, and Zarnax, who is currently on the Kraken night uh, Kraken fight with a solo thief. Yikes! That's not let's, a good sign. Let's just hope he gets the first attack, because Kraken was pretty paper. He had pretty high uh, evasion and and. Uh, Absorbed too, though. Unfortunately, the hold <laughs> the hold landed on Zarnax's solo thief. He casted fast and then popped him for eight eighty five. Oh no! <laughs> I did run into a four pack of zombie D's in uh, Topher. I started to fight them and then thought better of it. Oh, Zarnax did actually forfeit the race off of that yeah that's probably just a good way to bow out um gracefully on a on a gatekeeper like that i don't think he realizes how much hit points the kraken actually had because he was loading up right before the hold came so we are down to will bloodworth and salty fry This is actually so this is actually my first win of the leagues and it's on a weird round, but I'll take it. Yeah, hey, congratulations. And so, so Salty is going to finish the job with Lich by going and getting his rod. Now at least he remembered. So the progression items uh, unspooled uh, in this seed uh, really weirdly. I mean, the uh, the TNT was available almost immediately. Um, and then uh, Earth Cave was just stacked um, all the way, uh, you know, all the way down. Uh, there was something interesting in first floor, second floor, and then third floor. Um, of the people that are in here, uh, Ice Blue, uh, you already said that you, you didn't take the crown bait. Uh, Quicklit or Tristel, did either of you uh, go cash the crown in before you... You went back uh, farther down. I never did the crown. I never did the crown quest. Man, I feel real good about only losing by thirteen minutes, given what happened in my route. Then. Oh, I mean, I I full cleared ice, um, which was completely worthless, um, and ordeals, which wasn't completely worthless, but it still wasted time. I I full cleared literally everything, except like C. Did you do Marsh Cave? I did key locked Marsh Cave. Yeah. Salty Fry working his way now down to the third uh, level of the Earth Cave. You will find his vampire. Uh, go ahead and say hi to the vampire, bye to the vampire, um, and then uh, dive on down to Lich. Um, the uh, the magic that you had uh, in this uh, seed uh, made uh, anything with an ice weakness or a lightning weakness um, really difficult uh, to to kind of uh, take care of uh, this seed because the ice spells and the lightning spells were kind of nowhere to be found. Uh, did that uh, affect anybody's routing? I mean, there's nothing 
there's very little in the volcano that you can't run from. Um, and we had a million charges of quad X, so that was really, really useful. It, it did affect my routing a little bit in that I skipped the fire elemental chest in volcano. Once oh, we I, were getting, I fast and double tempered the night, possibilities for floater location. It was uh, getting a little tense for me. Not one chest I skipped, but Earth pulled through, I guess. Quadex was useful for some of our runners earlier uh, in the seed. Um, I believe it was uh, uh, was either Fuchsia or Salty uh, that found out that uh, the Giants rolled under 300 hit points, and so uh, Quadex was used to great effect there. Uh, on the uh, flip side, though, uh, the uh, the Peds um, were over 300 hit points, and I saw several runners uh, struggle uh, to take the um, the fabled EX Peds down uh, with just Quadex. Yes, basically as soon as uh, Pirates was over, I uh, went to go kill stuff at P.O.P. and managed to kill six giants with Quad X at like level, I don't know, three or something. So uh, that helped out quite a bit, give me a bunch of gold. Can you kill wizards with Quad X? No, you can. Yeah, I swear earlier I saw a wizard resist Quad X and then immediately another quad X killed him. So I wonder if there's an innate resistance of it, even though they have less than 300 hit points. But no one's replicated it yet, so I could be going crazy. And Will Bloodworth is in the Bridge of Destiny, discovered the Red Hydras had thunder, <laughs> and luckily only lost one of his Black Mages. So we are only at DEFCON 4 for swear words for Will at this point? Yeah, he seems to be kind of docile at the moment. I was in pretty full swear words mode. It's a good thing my mic wasn't on. I was having a lot of trouble running from things, too. Which was I don't know how many times I'll say it, but I'm certainly thankful I was commentating this race and not playing in it. So Salty Fry has um, entered into the Temple of Fiends Revisited um, and is working his way uh, past some gaze frost dragons. That's brutal. Okay. Um, gets past those. We are now on to the third level. Uh, the bad men were not that frightening. The gas dragons were. Um, and so seeing bad men, you got to be uh, pretty happy for that. And here we go. Uh, last uh, last battle of the uh, of the featured runners is uh, is the Phantom here, and a couple of charges of fire three, and that should be that. And there That'll we go. That'll do it. So uh, Salty Fry finishes up with a uh, with an SRL time of one hour, 56 minutes, and 56 seconds. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, see, uh, take a peek and see whether or not he wants to join us here uh, in chat for, uh, for a quick interview. Uh, in the meantime, uh, anybody want to give uh, some, uh, some final words as we uh, begin to uh, wrap things up? Any of our runners uh, want to say anything as we uh, start to uh, close things out here? Uh, I think this flag set, more than anything else, you really feel like you have to go fast all the time. If you knew the spell selection was a bit slower, um, you know, with, with Fire 3 at, at 3 and, and maybe Quad X, did, did you feel at all that uh, the pace of the overall encounter or the overall seed was going to be slower, or did you feel like it, it didn't matter? Um, I, I mean, I never felt like I didn't have the tools I needed to deal with things. So it it was just, you know, it, the fact that everybody went to Earth kind of last to find what they needed to find, I think, is what made the, the seed as slow as it was.
Ice Blue, any uh, any final thoughts uh, on your side? Are you are you basking uh, in the glow of your of your first league victory? <laughs> He, he must be asking so much he can't speak at the moment um so sforzando i i think uh, salty is uh, is planning on coming to join us here in a couple of seconds um i uh, i found this uh, seed to be super entertaining i don't know about you i i'm totally glad i was on the mic today and not actually running in this absolutely sitting on this end of it it definitely felt much better to watch than to play in and uh, we're joined now in the uh, in the commentary booth uh, with with Salty Fry. Uh, congratulations on uh, on your victory. Um, I'm sure you have uh, you have some opinions um, about some of the enemies that you ran into. Oh yeah, absolutely. That was uh, quite an interesting seed, to say the least. Those sea trolls with nuke were something else, and thunder as well. Uh, what was interesting is I managed to get to Kraken the first time with absolutely no issues without seeing those things. And then second and third and fourth time through is when I really started having all my issues. I got to tell you, uh, Salty, when you, when you go back, um, uh, Sforzano and I were having a great time calling your, uh, your first encounter with Kraken um, because it was, everything just sort of kind of slowly went wrong over the course of the, uh, of the battle. Um, so I'm sorry you wiped, but uh, it was, it was entertaining as all heck. Well, it's interesting because it was more just kind of a test anyway. Because like I was going in to see, like, okay, can I can I do this or do I need to go get that mass immune that I ended up dying to those uh, zombie dragons and not getting. And looking back on it, I probably could have killed them if I just cast fire three a few times, then cast quad X, considering he had less than three hundred and seventy five HP. Salty, so walk me through your demeanor when you finally discovered where the floater was. Oh, geez. So <laughs> I thought I made a great play, first of all, by just ignoring the crown at first and keeping going and getting the slab because like, it's so tempting after going all the way around the world and finally coming to Earth Cave and you see that crown and you're like, oh, this must be lead to the floater. So I'm like, all right, no, I'm not going to take that. I'm going to keep going. And then I keep going and get the slab. I'm like, all right, now I got this. All right, now I'll go do the crown thing because then I can get the floater and just go at that point in time. And then sure enough, I go through and do all that as well for a whole lot of nothing. So yeah, getting the floater was kind of frustrating at that point in time. You know you're way behind, but you figure where it was, most other people probably had the same type of uh, problems. I don't know if anyone else really went to the third floor of Earth very early. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I think Ice Blue would have been the only one to go Earth B3 that early. Yeah, that would make sense, because <laughs> there's not really a whole lot of reason to head down there. The first and second floor, maybe, but <laughs> the third floor is just so far spread apart, and there's so little there. I think there was one runner who opted to do the full dive when they did it, but was not the first dungeon they did. But I couldn't, I couldn't remember which one it was. Still, though, by the time I got that, that was pretty much my last choice at that point in time, which kind of sucked, and you kind of knew it had to be there. To make it worse, I died in the one dungeon that I actually kind of wanted to get out of, because I kind of wanted that Masmune power glove. So we've seen a couple of these races now, and they've gone very differently. Uh, the first seed uh, was uh, was pretty lightning fast. Um, we had everybody finish within 15 minutes. Uh, Artea uh, won uh, the second race uh, in this uh, flag set, um, kind of going away. Uh, won it by a, a good 15, 20 minutes, I think, over his next competitor. And this one was a was a little bit of a mix uh, of both. Um, you know. The, the first place finisher uh, gets done a little bit after an hour and a half, um, but then everybody sort of staggers in, um, you know, all the way up to, to two hours. I, I think that these, uh, this, these flags are going to be super interesting and super uh, coming down the stretch here. Yeah, definitely. And I think there's a lot more, um, at least somewhat more positivity about, about these flags. Uh, they're certainly entertaining they challenge you certainly in this seed they challenge you on a level of skill as a as opposed to more of the the luck base or rng based seeds um and so i'm definitely looking forward to to the remainder of the this stage 
So I see a question in chat there from Till911. If there's more runs to come, um, go ahead and click those links that are right above you. Uh, the schedule of races um, are, are posted there. We have 14 of these races over the next two weeks um, before we move on to the next set of st uh, challenge flags. Um, and so I think with that, we'll go ahead and, and start wrapping this up. Um, Salty Fry, you want to say anything uh, before we uh, sign off? Uh, just thanks for the restream. Thanks for putting this together. Been having a great time so far. Quickly, how about anything from you? I uh, know, just looking forward to more of this, this flag set. It's pretty fun. Alrighty then, uh, then I will uh, go ahead and sign off for myself here and I'll let uh, Sforzando wrap things up. Um, thanks everybody uh, for uh, for watching this evening. Uh, don't forget uh, to follow the runners, um, follow the uh, the people there behind the scenes that are in the uh, in the chat room there for you and give uh, give good old Speed Gaming uh, a follow. Um, and uh, and thank uh, Fiesel and everybody that helps uh, to make uh, Speed Gaming what it is. Um, we would, uh, our community, it, has uh, grown by leaps and bounds because of uh, the support on speed gaming. Um, and so I will sign off here and Sforzando, I'll turn it on over to you. Thanks so much, Maya. Uh, you literally said everything I was probably going to say. So uh, I will just sign off by saying, uh, go over and watch Will Bloodworth and cheer him on as he gets his finished. He is not the kind of guy I think that that forfeits easily. So uh, head over to Will Bloodworth's channel, give him a cheer, uh, let him know that uh, you're cheering him on. Uh, and, and maybe watch some of the salt flow. Uh, we will see certainly what happens. So, uh, yeah, again, thanks, Fiesel. Thanks, Speed Gaming, for hosting us. Uh, like Maya said, give those links a follow you see in your chat there. Come join us. We definitely love to have new players. Uh, come and join us. We're definitely a, a helpful and friendly bunch most of the time. And, uh, yeah, for that, I will just say good night, everybody. <laughs>